Armored Commander. So we have here this is a little little free software indie game that is out there. You can see the URL for the site listed there at the bottom of the title screen. It is just out there for free download, and what it is is a tank commanding roguelike. You are handed a a Sherman, some sort of Sherman, one of many variants of Sherman, mostly Sherman. And you have a crew for it, and you drive it about, occupied France or other parts of West Europe, try to fight it out with the things that you find, get shot at, often explode and need to replace your tank, or have your crew burned and mangled and need to replace them. But you soldier on and you try and make the best of a campaign and earn yourself a lot of, you know, valuable contribution points for having done well for the war. It does not have a soundtrack of its own, so I will be providing thematically appropriate backing music by way of the soundtrack to Hearts of Iron 3, starting now. There we go. So, I will be continuing on from a previously started but still quite young session of this. You can see there on the, uh, there's two campaigns implemented in the game at this point. Patton's Best, wherein you follow U.S. forces, and another, wherein you are instead a Canadian tanker campaigning around in slightly different environments, a little bit to the east of where Patton's forces are getting around. So, Sergeant Louis Scott there in the squirrel. August 2nd, 1944. Let's continue. So, the campaign, as it functions, we are here in Europe. We're vaguely over there at the friendly ad sign. Let me just tell OBS to capture my mouse cursor, since that's... There is mouse control in this as well, it's not a pure keyboard interface. There are things that can be pointed at and touched for relevant information. So yeah, right now we're over here in Brittany, and the campaign proceeds by way of a series of combat days, wherein, you know, we have a day where we're in a location, there's a type of mission that we're trying to accomplish, there's expected levels of enemy resistance and weather conditions that are going on that'll be modifiers when we head out and do our fighting, and we've been accumulating points in this campaign. So what we're going to do after a little bit of intermission management is we're going to drive on out to Rene there and go fight guys as we try to advance through some enemy territory. So let's take a look at our current tank. Here's the squirrel right now. It's a M4A3 Sherman armed with a 75mm gun, the D variant turret, which largely what all these stats will transfer into. More importantly, uh, They'll have a bunch of various bits of equipment that determine how they behave. They'll determine whether each of our crewmen has a hatch they can look out, which is uh, an important part of the mechanics. And exactly how much armor we have on the front and sides of the hull and turret. You can see here we have a... That's a decently tough front plate of the main hull, but our turret's kind of soft. And we are especially perilously soft if struck from the sides or back. This is a fairly fragile tank, but the 75mm gun is a decent weapon, and wet storage for our shells means we're less likely to explode when hit. The ammo, and our uh, smoke mortar, that's another tool that lets us conceal ourselves effectively while we're in the field. So our crew relatively decorated, but still largely rookies. I started this file with a different commander who was higher level, but got horribly wounded and had to go home. So you have your crewman of your tank, you have your commander, your gunner, your loader, your driver, and your assistant driver. They all have distinctive things they can do in combat, and skills that they develop as you level them up that let them do further things. Let me just pop into Lewis Scott here. I gave him a point of keen senses which reduce our chance of being ambushed when we get attacked by the enemy in the field and start an encounter. He's also won himself a shiny little medal for having done something or other. 
I don't recognize what that one is. These other ones are Purple Hearts. Our Gunner, Jack Holman, and our Driver, Anderson Han, both survived getting injured during a fight and are quite well decorated for it. They've got their various skills. Chance to improve our rate of fire, chance to uh, improve critical chance. Less, less accuracy penalty for shooting at moving targets. Each crewman has a set of distinctive skills for their class, and then also a set of generic skills that everyone can buy into. Making them better at uh, spotting enemies, less likely to die of injury, have an easier time bailing out of the tank when we have to abandon it. Better chance of resisting being harmed by collateral damage. Shake off debuffs, and better at helping to fix up parts of the tank that are broken, but reparably broken. It's our driver, Anderson. And our assistant driver. Anyone who's noticeably lower level, like our loader, is probably someone who died and had to be replaced. Uh, an aspect of the overall design of this that I enjoy is that... Well, you have you have that roguelike-y permadeath thing of everything can go horribly wrong and you can get your stuff wiped out, but your stuff then gets replaced and you move on with the campaign. Death and severe damage are setbacks, but don't halt you completely. You can carry on if you want to carry on. Every time that our tank is destroyed, we will get a different model handed to us. Depending on which options you choose at the start of the campaign, there's, uh, there's two sets of difficulty options. There's, for your commander's health, there's casual mode, which we are in, where if your commander dies, you get a new commander and carry on. And, like, intense mode, wherein commander death is a game over situation. And then for tanks, you have your strict mode wherein we have no control over what vehicle we get handed when our tank gets replaced. Or a more relaxed mode where we can pick from a list of Sherman variants which one we'd like to be equipped with. Oh, well, there's our stats laid out more cleanly. Let's go take a look at... well, I sort that out once we get rolling. Let's see, campaign stats, day 4 out of 68, so yes, the campaign overall is just the length of time that the rest of the war is going to last. Try to do your best to fight as hard as you can, we give our previous tanks have managed to capture many areas at the loss of a couple of lives, and defeat many enemy vehicles and soldiers for it. So let's go ahead and get ready to drive. So each day, there will be different amounts of stuff available to load your tank with. In terms of ammunition. So there will always be an infinite amount of your basic explosive and armor piercing bullets available, which you can just stock up on. HE is very useful for a lot of general purpose things, so you, you usually load the bulk of your tank with explosive round. And then the other two slots, what is in them, will vary day to day. Where right now we have access to white phosphorus and hexachlorothane based igniting ammunition. Those are two different kinds of smoke round that we can use to create protective clouds of smoke. The white phosphorus is hazardous to infantry that are caught in it. So if we lob that at an enemy soft unit, we can pin them down with the smoke. So it's a utility ammunition. The, the other stuff is clean and safe, so we can use that defensively. Just drop it on top of friendly units or drop it somewhere and then drive into it in order to make use of it. You can see that only six rounds, well, six further rounds of HCBI are available right now. There will be limited supplies of other things. Depending on a day-to-day -day basis. Ten is probably enough smoke round, though, so I'm just going to stock up on other bullet 
Uh, this cap here for our ammunition is a soft cap, actually. You can choose to load more rounds than that, but it increases the uh, risk of your ammunition detonating when you get hit. Because you're just stuffing yourself with dangerous amounts of extra bullet. And then separate from our regular general storage is our ready rack, where you have a much smaller storage space wherein you can more quickly load bullets, so it's easier to chain together multi-attacks if you are grabbing ammo off the ready rack. I keep that full of armor piercing usually because the time when I most need to desperately fling a bunch of bullets is when there is an enemy tank and I want to kill it dead right now. So keeping that full of AP rounds, anytime that I'm using explosive I can just relax and take it out of the general stores as needed. Anyway, let's continue. The size of those two storage spaces will vary based on which variant of the tank you're driving. So I can just, as a policy, decide who's gonna have their hatches open or not before we roll out. I'll pop everybody open. High visibility is useful for not getting ambushed. And you can see, with our current Sherman variant, everybody but the gunner has a hatch they can open. With the general trade-off being if the hatch is open, they have a easier time looking for enemy units and often have some extra tasks they can do, but if the hatch is open, they can also be shot at and injured. So when you do roll out to the battlefield, you have an amount of t daylight hours that you can use to drive around and do fighting. So, when you arrive, you will just have spent a random amount of time and a random amount of explosive rounds on just miscellaneous shooting at other things. Just, you know, swatting birds, getting panicked, being confused and alarmed by various possible enemy contacts. But now here we are at the map. And on the map, if we scroll on up here, so our objective is to try to reach the exit zone over there, by whatever means necessary, before the day is over. We have 10 hours and 15 minutes before the sun sets, and we have begun over here. You can see these nice thick lines here, those delineate different zones of combat on the board. So we are going to make a series of moves through these zones in order to try and reach there. These gray and brown lines that get roads, you have an easier time moving from one of those to the other. But, depending on the terrain type you move through, you will encounter different amounts of enemy resistance, have different chances of being ambushed, different amounts of cover for units to hide behind. So, like, at a glance, the fastest path we could probably take is to get onto the road here, and then just drive through that village, and then across this open field then get off over there, but the village itself could be a very dicey place to advance through. Whereas we could take a longer way around, going through other roads to cross open fields, or you could drive into a swamp if you really wanted to, if you're having that kind of bad day. So, let's see. To begin the combat day, you always get one free one free check for enemy resistance level, where this is an action you can take to get a vague idea of how much hostility is in a zone. Only light enemy resistance over there. We get that one for free. Other recon checks cost an amount of time. Now we're sitting here wondering what to do. You can either conduct recon, you can move into adjacent land, which will probably provoke some kind of fight. We can try to resupply, wherein if you've depleted your ammo, you can spend an hour just getting refilled at a supply train, or at least trying to. Or we could call for support fire from artillery or aircraft. You can see down here our odds of getting a successful bombardment from either of those. Calling for support fire means we'll get a bunch of free opportunity attacks if we get in a fight in a nearby zone. I am willing to just drive, though, for this first area. Light resistance, open field, no problem. Let's just go. So we'll just move over there. And as a baseline option, you can choose to spend 
some explosive rounds just while you're driving in. So yeah, if we encounter nothing, we wasted the ammo. But if there were enemy resistance here, we'd get a couple of free shots in. Because we decided to be cautious and just bomb possible enemy cover. Let's take a look at that village. Light resistance in the village expected? Yeah, I like the sound of that. Let's just drive on in there. Four rounds of advancing fire. And a fight. And enemy APC, enemy self built gun. Enemy infantry have joined the fight. Alright, so now that an ambush round has had time to uh, play out at us. So, this is the combat screen. You are always at the middle of this grid of hexagons. You can see the kind of dark lines here that indicate the six directions that things can be in relative to your tank. You are always at the middle, and there is assumed to be a bunch of vague, unspecified friendly units alongside you and your hex. We're not driving out alone. There are friendly tanks and friendly infantry in this area. But mostly what they exist to do is get shot at and cost us points if they die. So yes, we are here. And the spotting phase has occurred. Since all the hatches are open, all of our guys are able to see in pretty much every direction. So we have done a pretty good job of identifying our enemies. There's a Stug 3 off on our left. In cover in some woods. Its front is facing us. Over here, there's an SPW-251 APC. It is out in the open, sitting stationary, and we can see its side. And there is a batch of enemy infantry with light weapons. Which are mostly harmless to us as a tank, but sometimes infantry will have anti-tank weapons, and if they get close to you, they will have the chance to try to use them. So we are worried about that a little bit. So what happens now is we will have a round of getting to tell each of our crewmen to do something. And what they can do depends on who they are. And some combination of those actions will... Oh, we started hold down. Very good. So yes, right now our tank is stationary and we are in cover. So if the enemy shoots at us, they can only hit us in the turret. A shot that would hit our body just won't work. We're just behind something large enough to cover the body of the tank. That's very useful, and that saves me a lot of concern. Infantry are much more dangerous if your hatches are open, because then their small arms can get to work on you. So, let's... First of all, lock down everyone but the commander. Because the commander, their primary role in the tank is to buff other members of the crew, which they can only reasonably do if they can see what the hell they're doing. You suffer a lot of accuracy penalties if your commander can't see what they're doing and is just kind of giving guesswork. So I am thinking that since we do have cover, our priority one is to just start lobbing shells at that stug and see if we can break it open. Our gun is loaded with armor piercing and we're going to be loading more armor piercing from the ready rack. Those are also things that you can adjust or spend actions to juggle around. So our gunner is just going to fire off the main cannon when his turn comes around. Our loader is going to focus on helping to reload the gun. The assistant driver will do what he can to help out, should it become necessary. And the driver will just chill out. Because with this early version of the Sherman, we are not capable of shooting while moving. That's just beyond the Sherman's power. You cannot move and shoot in the same turn. You have to stop and then shoot the main gun. You can fire your machine guns while moving, but not the cannon. Not yet. Eventually you get the upgrades that let you do that. But right now, we're stuck. 
But that's fine, because we're in a favorable position. So yeah, this is going to be my turn. The gunner will open fire, the commander will help him aim, call his shots, and everybody else will just dig in and be ready to support that core action. Everyone but the commander has their hatch firmly shut. That'll probably impact our visibility on the next round, but I think we'll be okay for the most part. Yes, you can see down here in the event log that we are in cover because uh, the cautious driver skill triggered properly. Uh, the assistant driver has control of the whole machine gun, which can only fire forward. So we can't use that for anything right now, since all of our targets are off on the left. After we deal with the Stug, I will definitely consider turning the tank to face them so we can open up with all barrels. Okay, that's all orders given. Alright, firing the main gun. So you can aim your turret in any of the six directions. And then, within a direction, select a thing that you would like to beat up. In our case, we're gonna buzz the Stug. The APC is not heavily armed enough to be a threat to us, and the infantry are a ways off, and we can just mulch them if they try to get close with other weapons. Right now, the Stug is the biggest threat, so I am going to try and tear it open. How firing works, your attacks are a series of rolls of 2d6. They will have a difficulty to hit based on the situation the enemy is in, and a bunch of modifiers based on what you're up to. You're trying to roll under the target number, so positive numbers like these are bad. We're shooting at a tiny vehicle in a forest and had to turn the turret this turn. If you didn't have to turn the turret during the shot you're taking, your gun is more accurate. That's a hit, though. And then, depending on the skills of everybody else, you will either end your barrage or be able to continue firing right away. So we're going to continue firing right away. There's another hit, rate of fire is maintained. And now, as part of the dynamics of the game, we could choose to stop the barrage early if we want, but we don't know whether or not we've succeeded until after we make that call. We don't get to assess the damage dealt until after we're done shooting. So, you, it's your choice of do you go all in and fire everything you've got, even if it's overkill, or do you you cut off early to save ammo and risk not finishing the job. We managed to run through the whole ready rack. And that's our rate of fire. Not maintained. Still, five hits. That's some good gunning. First shot bounced. Second shot bounced. Third shot bounced. Fourth shot bounced. But is immobilized. Good. APC is turning. Stone is shooting back. And we're fine. Light infantry are backing off. And the APC is smoked. Yeah, that's a that's a supporting action that your miscellaneous friendlies will often do. They will often throw down smoke at things. Alright, here we are back in orders. To which I think just more of the same. I mean, we didn't manage to damage the Stug at all. Well, we, we tracked it. That's damage, not decisive damage, but it's still damage. We're in cover, and it's smoked. On the other hand, I could try to flank it. Because we're facing its front, and its front, if I like, uh, yeah, if I go in detailed, we can see the more detailed stats. Stug 3, 75mm gun, 8 points of front armor, 3 points of side. He's a tough little fella. And for comparison over there, yeah, the APC one point of armor on all sides. Absolute garbage. Made of paper compared to proper tanks and anti-tanks such as ourselves.
Yeah, I like my firing position. I'll just, I'll just stay the course. Even if he's under smoke, I vaguely know where he is, and I didn't have to turn anymore. He's not evasive. He's just rude. He's tough, but I think we can break him. Gotcha. Now that just leaves that APC. And friendlies took care of it. Very nice. Friendlies will sometimes break light units without your concern. So there we go, a successful small engagement. Just four points worth of kill. You can see by the by the scoreboard here, there are much more dangerous things that are worth proportionately more points if you can take them down. A fine addition to the board. And another six points for securing the village. Let's get explosive into the into the barrel though. That tends to be more useful for general purpose engagements. And fill the ready rack. Just go ahead and slot those in. The ready rack size is a hard cap. You cannot overstuff it. That starts intruding on the gunner's personal space. He needs that. And I'll pop all the hatches again. Everybody get some air. Yeah, background fun friendlies have grabbed a nearby area. So we could safely drive into that open field and expect no enemy resistance, or we can carry on down the road which will be faster, but could be filled with enemies. Let's take a look at that road. What do you got? Light resistance on a field. Yeah. Let's do it. Get ourselves another fight. Two light infantry squads. Okay. Let's conduct business. Just open up with all the machine guns. Uh, we also, alongside all of our smoke rounds for the main cannon, carry a number of smoke grenades that our crew can just throw out the window if necessary to put smoke around the tank. And if you have a smoke mortar, you will carry a number of smoke bombs for launching out of that. Yeah, I can hold steady for now. Probably have to chase down that other guy, but if I have to, that's easily done. We'll just drop all of these machine guns where we have the uh, coaxial gun on the main turret, we have the bow machine gun on the front, and this variant also has an anti-aircraft machine gun up top for the commander. So we're just going to give all of those. So there's the coaxial, the damage, it's the bow gun. I might get better results out of having the commander call shots instead of throw more bullets. Machine gun is malfunctioned. Damn it! Well, that's a decision made for me. Good job, Lou. You broke it. It's okay, somebody else dealt with it. Now the enemy has snuck into the woods.
enough of this. Ready the cannon. Okay, that's a terrible shot. We're gonna have to drive over there and give him what for. Alright, pivot the tank. And we'll light up with the machine guns in the meanwhile. We're gonna face this way. Looks like they're out of machine gun range. That's a pity. Guys, come on! Such terrible performance. Actual negative value out of this fight. Too many friendlies died. Well, at least we fixed the AA gun. Yep, that's all as it should be. Let's continue driving. Let's. Proceed with caution down the road. What do we got? More light resistance? Sure. Let's keep driving. And it's clean. Ah! Friendly supply truck. Chance to restock in only 15 minutes. I'll take that. That's good. Let's get back up to roughly my original ammo composition. Yeah. No one else is showing up to resist me. Medium! Oh boy. That could be tangible. That usually means actual tank. In which case... Let's try to call for bombardment. Artillery. There we go. We've successfully called for an artillery strike. So that's some extra opportunity fire that will pile in there when we drive over if a fight begins. Let's go. You can also call for airstrikes, which are more powerful but harder to coordinate. Lower chance of succeeding. You can also see our artillery chance got a little worse, since we're like, using up what's available. Enemy truck. Enemy armored car. Light infantry. And we're ambushed by an armored car and some air. Okay, this is quite harmless. Setting aside the surprise, we're alright. This will not be a problem. Ah, I'm moving. Sensible, since we're being ambushed. Let's reverse into cover. May as well play it cool. Also more, I'd love to reverse and get a good shot angle in on that, uh, that 
truck. No, that armored car. The truck's dead. Repositioning cut off our spotting. Never mind. So, this is a phase that we've skipped previously because I've had everybody up and out in the open, but uh, you can see on the spotting list here of possibilities, some people, when their hatch is shut, have partial ability to see by way of, like, a scope. So our loader can look in any one direction of our choice. On a given round. Hmm. So that armored car has managed to get deeper into hiding. Rude. Although, what that also means is that there is no line of sight between us, so he can't shoot at us either without repositioning. We've just managed to get some kind of solid obstacle between us. Yeah, I'm just going to ignore the infantry off that way and focus on being ready to go after this armored car. Get in there. Machine gun ammo is infinite. It is not tracked in any appreciable way. Alright, no valid machine gun targets. Enemy infantry are closing in. Just regular forward. I would love to reestablish contact with that car. And there's smoke in the way, so it should be quite easy. Let's see. And at the very least, I can get some machine gun fire off at those guys. Get up there. Stuck in the mud. Thanks. Good job, guys. That's... Thanks, nature. It's a dry day, so mud is less common than in other times, but it can still happen. Mud can strike at any moment. Always be vigilant for mud. Okay, somebody else got that while we were stuck in a hole. Good. What a day. Oh, thanks, alright then. I don't need a friend of the supply truck. I mean, we have four hours left of driving time. If I wanted to, I could meander around and farm points in these nearby areas. But I'm willing to proceed to the exit zone and just also it gets slow wait, hold on. Ow. 
I forgot to do any of the important things I should have done before walking in here. Now who knows what's waiting. One APC. One light infantry squad. And we're ambushed. I can work with this. Bring the tank to a stop. Actually, I'm gonna machine gun. Yeah, forward into cover if possible. Yeah, we'll drive forward, try to liquefy those infantry, and then come about and swat the armored car. Well, APC. The other thing. The thing with wheels and tracks that what is not men on foot. Yeah, you're fine, guys. And the rest of the team dealt with the- Okay, sure, we, we did a good job spotting and distracting. And once you complete a map alive, you can actually move on to a new engagement area and use the rest of your daylight hours for more fighting. Let's take a look at what's here. So once again, our exit point is at the end of a fairly decent road. Light resistance there, so yeah, I'm just gonna aim to get on that road. Medium resistance in a village. No need for you, friendly supply truck. Try for the artillery. There we go. It took a while to get a word in edgewise. You know, the artillerists are very busy. It's a tight schedule for bombardment these days. Now we drive in. Medium resistance battle. What do we got? Enemy SPG. Other enemy SPG. Third enemy SPG. This is rude as hell. Oh boy, here we are tanking again. Enemy Yag Panzer 38. Two of them and one, probably a third in like a squadron of them. Oh boy. <laughs> we sure drove into something. Guys, we might want to, to get under cover of anything. Direct movement. Just remember the commander can support pretty much any task that anyone else does. So having him direct movement will help the driver have better odds of repositioning us into cover. And then assistant driver, pop your hatch. And you, know, you would not be able to throw smoke about the loader. Yeah, you will throw a smoke grenade and we will we will find somewhere to cower and wait this out. Because oh boy, one Sherman versus three Yag Panzers. No cover. Not far enough to fight. We got the smoke, though. Smoke will help. Smoke is friend.
since there's also two layers of you can spot something without being able to identify what it is. So we could shoot at it, but we don't know the vehicle's stats. 14 armor on the front of these Jagdpanzers. These are, uh... Oh boy, here we get that one side on. Okay, this is an opportunity I cannot waste. It must die. Alright, let me see. Get, get the armor piercing loading from the rack. We are going to sit still and fire the main gun. Since we do have the, the tiny frail side armor of that thing exposed, we can get at it. We also have that one side on, but it is comfortably under smoke. Assistant driver, could you renew our smoke? Driver, can you renew the smoke since we aren't going anywhere? Nope. You do not have access to the grenade pile, so you just sit still. Assistant driver, pass ammo, stay locked up. Everyone else, let's just go in on the old bullet supply chain here. Ah, three egg pencils. All right, start shooting. All right, AP is up. Crit! I will take no chances. Give it every bullet you can. Alright. Get it mobilized. And it's dead. That is one less guide panther. They're closing in though. We can see them both. The slightly closer one is in the woods and side on. We have the back. Gu wow, guy, it's Christmas. Yeah, each hex is kind of a vague area. There's no, like, fine-toothed grid of mobility, it's just near, middle, and far distance in each of the directions. The rear-facing one is hull down. The closer one will be our target. Ugh, doom is imminent. They're, they're really bearing down on us. This is... These are, dice, these are tight times. This is dicey. Feel like I have to press the attack though. If I were feeling if I were feeling less aggressive, the move I would take is to try and move the tank into cover and refill my ready rack so that when I do start shooting again, I can guarantee like a good 5 round burst. Do not question what the distinction between hull and not hull is on a flat vehicle with no turret. It's all hull, and I guess it's down. Yeah, it's facing away, so it can't fire at us. That'd be the other thing that is securing that I will, I will start shooting instead of try to hide. Because they aren't looking at me, they aren't shooting at me this round. One hit. Stunned. Alright, that is now... Now facing us, but it's in the open. Uh, there's also a benefit of taking shots at something. Even if you fail, you build up. You can see that acquired target value down there. That is a, like, cumulative bonus to future shots, just as your gunner starts to sort out the distance and figure out that sweet spot for landing on it. Yes, someone has posted there a picture of this vehicle. It's just a very 
flat iron box with a gun at the front. It's, it's a mighty war cube. So... Uh, one of them is looking at me now, though. I feel like I gotta take the defensive action here. Movement. Reverse into cover. Refill the ready rack. Preemptively rotate the turret. Because that will save us a bit of accuracy the next time that we start shooting. And you can just relax. Also, everybody should probably close up at this point, except the commander. We are about to end up on, on the other hand. Maybe they should stay open, because, like, if we're gonna get hit by one of these, it's going to ruin us, and we'd rather have the doors open so everyone can bail faster. Yeah, let's go with that. All right, we have cover. And have repositioned the enemy a bit more forward. Though they now they're both looking at us. I don't know which... Then neither of them is concealed. We'll just keep facing that way. And I can refill the rack with whatever I like. Pile on the AP rounds. Stay safe, other tank. And friendlies destroyed one of the egg fences. It has become hidden. So, do we wait it out or do we go for it? Your move, egg panther. I'll just drop some smoke and, uh, let's see what happens. What do you want to do? Egg Panzer, you want to move? Out of cover and get seen? You want to move out of cover, get seen, and show me your back? Now you are doomed. Yes. Fire main, direct main, pass ammo, reload, don't move. Light him up. Never turn your back to Sherman. Multiple critical hits in this barrage. And keeping rate of fire even after the rack is depleted. Yes! Good! Split him wide open! The combat day is almost over, so I'm not worried about running out of ammo. We're about to go to sleep anyway. There will be more bullets at sunrise. My god, this hot streak! Give him everything you got! Okay, so how many hits was that? Target automatically destroyed by that many hits. No rolls necessary. It's dead. It's dead. You killed it. <laughs> There's more bullet than me. Like a 12 hits. <sighs> ah, it became a practice dummy. And yeah, okay, yeah, looking down there, uh, you can see our uh, gunner or loader, whichever one Cecil is, 
triggered some skills to help maintain the rate of fire. That's the benefit of that. Get fucked, Jagpanzer. Show you who's king of the jungle. Ah, oh, what a barrage. Yeah, there's one hour of daylight left. We are not going to bother driving anywhere else today. Let's do some recon. Medium resistance on the main road. Light resistance on the side road. And light resistance over there. Yeah, we get all right. We get some occasional free recon just from friendlies doing what they do. Fifteen minutes left till sunset. Just, just for the hell, recon the swamp. Is there anybody in that swamp? Would hate to get like swamp flanked. Apparently, we can't even enter the swamp. It's just off limits. the day's about to end. Let's see if we can call for an airstrike on the main road. Yeah, rough it up a bit. Good job, Scott! You've earned that level. That abstract measurement of skill. You got it. Jack Holman, Ben Lynch. Experience for everybody. Crew. My friends. You've done well. Oh, Scouts are a uh, leader. Yes, you have learning. Let's up that keen sense. Another notch. I like not getting ambushed, do you? I, th I think we can all agree that not being ambushed by three Jagdpanzers is uh, a very preferable turn of events. Having experienced the the contrary to that, I can I can firmly say I'd rather not have that happen again. Target tracking, own weak spots, or hell yeah, quick trigger like we want them dirty dozens. Jack Holman, my gunner, my boy, and loader, you have fast hands. I appreciate your fast hands. Use them well. No ranks of shell juggler, but... That'll be a good one to dive into, wherein... When that skill pops, you can just, for free, grab from regular storage instead of the ready rack. You're just that good. Add bullets. You can also, in the process of rogueliking through this, you can rename all of these crew and give them nicknames and so forth, if you feel like customizing and labeling them. You're doing good, Squirrel. You also, each time that one of your tanks dies, get to name your new one. I have just been using the random name button for that purpose so far. It's served me well. Squirrel's a good tank. Okay. The next day. Let's do a combat. More smoke rounds available today. I don't really want those. Load up the rack. Replace all those lovely piercing shells I spent. And get nice and stuffed with explosive. That's us ready to go. Hatch is open. It's a beautiful day. Let's drive. Four hours, 12 rounds. Pretty normal cost of engagement. Nope, we don't get to carry over. You get a fresh map at the start of a fresh day of combat. War has changed. Take my free recon on the road. I hate to be boring about roads, but roads are often just a good idea. You just save so much time crossing the map, and they're often through clear terrain. So yeah, it looks like we'd be heading up the road and then cutting across the field there. Or in the event of a very strong enemy presence in that village, 
maybe then cutting out across the countryside instead. Light resistance on the road though, let's drive. Enemy machine gun team. And enemy regular infantry. And now it is we who ambush! Driver, pivot the vehicle. Yeah, that'll do, since they're, they're hidden right now, so I couldn't... Without some kind of movement, I won't have a shot at them at all. Yeah. Just a bunch of saber rattling. Moved away. And been spotted. Good. Actually... What if I swap out the gun load? Do a certain something else, and apply that to the situation. Hey guys, think fast! So yes, you can have your loader spend their action to change what ammo type you have loaded, but it opts out of the chance of a barrage, because, you know, you threw off all your rhythm needing to unload the gun and swap it out. Eat shit, enemy infantry! Ah, damn. They were able to take cover. Oh, these things happen. Forward. We settle in and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Everybody, pick a man and start shooting. Nailed him! Eventually. Some of those guns are terribly inaccurate, at least at medium range. They probably do well at close. Two victory points. All is well. Recon! Light enemy presence. Good. And here's another mechanic springing up. Sometimes while you're in the middle of a combat day, a bonus objective will appear. Just some point of interest that command has decided they really want taken. So you will get extra points if you go and capture that zone on your way. So we'll do that. Even though it takes longer to go off-road into open terrain. Enemy truck. Enemy armored car. And ambushed. At least we see them, and they are, let's see. Hull down side, and hull down side. The Opal truck has no armor at all. Which makes it a case where you actually would rather use an explosive shell than a piercing shell because you will grotesquely over-penetrate it with a piercing shell and just 
There'll be a hole in it. It won't like that, but the shell won't go off. You won't explode it. Just put a hole in it. That's rude. Let's flip over to explosive for this batch of hostiles. Yeah, we'll change our gun load. actually snap the hatches shut for the most part. I mean, they're in front of us, but they are two armed vehicles. They'll have small arms fire, and the APC might offload. Or no, there's no APC. Just truck and armored car, but yeah. Machine guns could be hazardous to my men. I would rather play safe. And our commander managed to put us hull down, anyway. Not that there's anything dangerous in play here. I start with the near target. Just missed. Yeah, let's got the truck. Yeah, we'll just settle in to bombard that uh, armored car. Guys, come on. What is this? What, you got all tired out from that last amazing bombardment? You spent all your anger? Everyone's just very out of it today, very tired. Still, 10 bonus points. During these interfight equipment sections, you can also change directly what is loaded into your gun. I also wonder if you can get an enemy vehicle to bail out by lighting them up with phosphorus. That seems like it would be a very useful tactic. I like light resistance. I've endured. Infantry and a truck. Just a truck. Just a truck that is running away. Okay, there's no fight. If the enemy decides to move out of the engagement zone, or if you move such that all the enemy are taken out of the engagement zone, the fight ends. It means you don't get any points for doing a murdering, but it also means the fight ends. It can be quite reasonable to choose to not fight various large dangerous things. There we go. Spent a bit of extra time, but managed to circumvent whatever that medium resistance is. So, anti-tank gun there refers to, like, a stationary cannon, or a dude in a position with an anti-tank rifle or something like that. And we pinned it down. So, part of a benefit of that is... Those cannot move at all. They are completely fixed in position. So if you end up in a situation where one of those has no line of sight on you, it is harmless. It's effectively dead, unless you move. I'd like to give it an explosive round out of the main gun, though. Yeah, let's just ruin it. If we can. Yeah, that's some kind of emplaced gun. Rather than 
an anti-tank gun, as in a vehicle for hunting tanks. Those are always referred to as self-propelled guns in the text of the game. We will have a harder time maintaining our rate of fire with explosive because we haven't put any on the rack. Need to draw it out of the regular storage down in the hull. And those enemy infantry are just getting the hell out of here. They don't want to be here in the slightest. You know what, let's pivot. Because this is an AT gun, I would like, and I'm not hold down, I really should have my front to it. Then I can drive up there and try to give it a bop on the nose. The smoke mortar also, rather than putting smoke directly on your hex, puts it in an adjacent hex. Alright, someone else dealt with it. A criticism I will levy against the game, as it is, is that movement feels very weird. Ah, someone else is taking the road. Good for him. Like, you don't really have any direct fine control over how you maneuver on the field, and the vague nature of positioning means it's hard to try and judge what move forward or move back or turn will do. And if it, well, turn always does turn, but... Moving forward and back will sometimes make only vaguest of sense. Medium resistance in the objective zone. Forward. Well, wait, wait. No, it's too late, I've already committed. Normally, I'd ask for friends to bombard it, especially since we have, like, a whole hour left in the day, but there's no time. We fight. We do it alone. Alone, and, you know, alongside the random friendly two enemy anti-tank guns in our forward arm. And one machine gun team. Alright, we got a pack 38. Pack 38 there. Get another back there. And the machine gun team has dropped out of sight. Alright, let's get the main cannon. Doing what it does. And we've gone hold down automatically. Very nice. That's some good thinking on the part of our team. There we go. Lock up the body of the tank. And start shooting. Good going, guys. Penetrated. Tank disabled. Everyone bail. Will they? Will they? Mm. Alright. 
Success. No, never mind. Benz. Benz is dead. Benz is dead. He made it out, but he's dead. I don't know what hit him, but Benz is dead. That's how quickly things can go wrong when you're driving a Sherman. God damn it, Cecil. Ullman's lightly injured. Anderson's lightly injured. Scott got out fine. Benjamin's fine. But. God damn it, Benz. Everyone managed to bail out except Cecil, who is dead. He died outside the tank, though, so he succeeds. Maybe he tripped. Maybe he... maybe he hit his head. Maybe some shrapnel got him, but yeah, there's that tank dead. Anderson is now level 4. Cecil's fucking dead. But yeah, even if your tank gets destroyed, you still get points for the day from your accomplishments. Posthumously awarded a purple heart. Good job, Cecil. You tried. Killed in action. Welcome aboard, Bill Wolf, our new assistant driver. Bill Wolf from Tampa, Florida. Yeah, you're a shell tosser. You know how to juggle. Oh, he actually came in with a lot of skill points. Yeah, you're an expert at tossing those rounds. Good man, assistant driver Bill Wolf. Willard. And we have been assigned an M4 turret B replacement tank. Let us call it Rachel. No, that's not a Cairo. Eh, Predator, maybe. There are some fine net clod hopper. Our new tank, the Claude Hopper. So yes, that day of fighting is over. We'll have to advance front to the next one to continue. But we have crew who are alive and well Anderson needs to spend. Yeah, get your more cautious driver. I like getting free cover. Free cover is good. Bomb would be a good name for the tank. Bomb is an accurate description of most Shermans. Bomb on wheels. I could always rename it. If necessary. But yes, there it is. So this time, wow, we have been firmly downgraded. Look at this thing. Look at the eight points of front armor. Just a smoke mortar, no web storage. It's quite basic. It, uh, wow. What a tank. Uh, the almost completely stock Sherman. the next day. But yeah, your tank itself is is replaceable and disposable and you know, when you when you lose a tank, you just crawl home, you scrape Cecil's remains off your boots and then you go get a new tank. They're Shermans. They will die and there will be more. I'm not sure what the full list of available Sherman types is. It could probably be looked up on the game's website. Or by starting the game in more casual mode, wherein you can uh, have your pick of tank. There's a helpful glossary of terms, including <coughs> an entry for M4 Sherman itself. In case you were not aware of this lovely tank. Uh, 
Oh yeah, another dry, clear day, advancing through the countryside, northeast of Venn. Let's combat day. Well, at least it has a nicer ready rack. That's something that we can say in this tank's favor. More space for quick firing. That's useful. I could keep explosive rounds on the ready rack too, and then we can have all kinds of barrages. Less overall ammo storage, but I think that kind of balances out. Usually you want to take as many of the limited ammo type as you can. Just because there's no guarantees that there will be a decent supply on a given day. Like that one mission that occurred in a prior stream on this file, which will not be YouTubed, but wherein we got just one of the more better armor-piercing bullets, the uh, discarding Sabo rounds. There was just one available that day. You get one good bullet, don't, don't waste it. Don't ruin it. You get the one. Use it wisely. Yeah, there we go. Load it up. Uh, same hatch configuration as before. Yeah, we'll roll out, load it with HE. Similar amounts of grenade at the ready. Yeah, let's go. Five hours later, we reach the battlefield. Let's see what we've got. Starting in the corner there. Heading on up the road, but this time there's plenty of unpleasant terrain along the road. A village got a forest in the way. Light enemy resistance, let's go. And our first fight in the new tank, what do we got? Light weapon infantry, machine gun team. Ambushed. Now well, we got our spots in though. I almost feel like throwing a shell out of the main gun is overkill for these guys. Well, is that the... Yeah, that's the machine gunners. Sure, let's give them hell. Stop. You picked the wrong day <laughs> to show up for work, friends. The benefits of a ready rack. No kidding, machine gun team destroyed. You start running, friend. You start running and you never you never escape. You're never going home. Light Weapons Team is never coming back. Alright. Main gun ammunition. Pull some more shells onto the rack. We'll have a fair reserve. I don't think we'll need to resupply quite yet. Oh, recon. Definitely going to stick to the road in the field. Light resistance in the area. Oh! And an objective over there. They want that town. I guess I could divert to it. Got seven hours. Medium resistance. 
Upgraded to heavy resist. Okay. Friend artillery. Please bombard. And, uh... Friend artillery, please... Uh, no, yeah, friend plane. Please also bombard, if you can. Or, okay, no, I'm not allowed to stack bombardments on the tile. Just the one. Alright, what's going to happen? Heavy enemy resistance. Tank gun. Truck. Truck. Tank gun. That's relatively light. It's four units. But the ones that can threaten me are also stationary. It's in a building, that's what's gonna make it complicated. Whatever, the other one has lost line of sight, so it's harmless now. Just need to try and topple this fellow. Idling. Gun is shooting at something other than us. Somebody got the truck. It's a pack 40. Okay. Yeah, let's actually make use of the rack during this and begin bombardment. Come on, guys, quick load. Like you trained. We'll have to resupply after this. We are running low on shell. Got him. Yeah, I'll just kind of carry on. I mean, free truck. truck if I have to chase you down. Nope, friendly's cleaned it up. Alright, good. Nice level 10 point fight. And 6 for the capture. 10 more for the bonus. And I absolutely need to stop at a supply base. We got four hours left in the day. So I don't think we'll make our objective, but we will still get plenty of point out of this fight. And whatever we have left to fight, I definitely want to face it with all of my ammo. So let's just get stocked. And drive recklessly forward. Battle of unknown size, but we got APC. Enemy tank! And APC. At least we're hold down. spotted, unidentified tank. 
Never mind, identify tank. Panzer 4H. That's not bad. That's relatively light. It's, in, it's a fellow medium tank. That's kind of our peer. Oh, if I just switch over to the appropriate ammo tabs. I think we can have ourselves a time. I'm not gonna bother swapping out that first HE shell. I'll leave it there. Just because I... In order to change that, I would have to give up the chance for a barrage anyway. So I think it's a it's an okay price to pay for getting the rest of these shots in, if they work. We're shooting at the front of the Panzer IV, but this should work out. Yeah, if his hatches are open, then the explosive round can probably still do some good. Alright, it accomplished nothing. Piercing round. Nail! Armored is an armored personnel carrier, one point of armor. Light enough that I'd probably want to flip back to explosive. But I could still give him hell. Like, I don't think the AP will over pierce that. It won't be wasted. Shoot him up. No mercy. It held up all right, all things considered. Now to finish the job. Except our gun is... Empty. Oh, our gun jammed. That's what threw us up. We gotta repair the gun. Oh, yeah, drop a smoke grenade. Everybody button up. Then we'll try to get the gun fixed. Oh, that's another thing that's in place in the mechanics, where if your crew idle, that improves their ability to spot targets, because they're not being distracted by any other task. You can see there that if we had the assistant driver busy passing ammo, he'd not be able to see anything. Whereas if he's just relaxing, he can look forward or everywhere but backwards when the hatch is open. Hatch is closed, though, for safety. It is time to be safe. Main gun is malfunctioning and must be corrected. Quickly. Alright, that's sorted out. Good little fight. Remember to put bullets into the gun after such a malfunction. If your gun got unloaded during the fight, you will need to reload it in the post-fight. Don't roll into a fight with an empty gun. It's not fun. Supply truck, I don't need you. I would have appreciated you a while ago, but... 
we're beyond that. And if I just keep driving without any recon at all, I can still reach the exit. Actually, with half an hour of travel time on well, these road sections, I could still do recon. Recon was unnecessary. Victory is a tame. And a bonus objective has appeared on this map where we have all of 45 minutes left in the engagement day. Which will be spent immediately traveling down this empty dirt road. Our commander is now level 3. So is Ben Lynch. And Cecil's still dead. Let's go ahead and max that out. 30% chance of canceling an ambush. Or 30% chance of furthermore having a chance to increase ambush odds. The other commander skills are also useful. Just chance of be better at directing fire. Chance of be better at directing movement. Chance of increasing everyone else's proc rate on their skills. That's pretty useful. And then, the generics, be good at spotting, don't get shot, bail out easy, ignore, wounds, recover from status effects. Where when you max that one out, you just don't, you just don't status effects, you just auto-recover from stun. Or auto-mitigate wounds. And be better at mechanicking. Someone has to know how this vehicle works. Finish up with the fast hands. That's your core skill loader. That's going to give you all kinds of benefits. We're going to have the fastest tank in the West. Whichever we happen to be driving that day. Or this next day of August 5th. Man, I hope this one kind of gets exploded so that we can replace it with anything at all. Any better tank? Does anyone have a different tank? I want to trade in my tank. We'll give it a good home on the battlefield. At least the weather has stayed nice so far. Rain would be- oh wait! Overcast! New weather. Slightly worse visibility. At least it's still dry. Alright. So, map. We got a bunch of fields. Got this kind of road web going on. One of which leads directly to the exit. So let's head north. Cut through that village. Or... Actually, no, forget the village. We'll go around the village through these fields on the left side. That will be our ramp. Then we get on the road there. And drive through. Yeah, no airstrikes today. That's the big problem that Overcast causes. Nobody's flying. It's all ground travel. Light enemy resistance. Forward. Thank you for that remark, Assistant Driver. But yeah, I'm gonna... Mm, even at a medium resistance. Yeah, I can afford to do a lot of support actions with 11 hours of daylight and such a short path to the exit. I think the new guy's just jumpy. Huh, medium nothing. Okay. And a bonus objective on the way. Good. Very good. That's a much better idea. I'll drive this way. Yeah. 
There could be ten King Tigers over there, but I'm not gonna give them the time of day. Enemy SPG. Eggpants of Comp Wagon 4. Self propelled gun. Fourteen points of frontal armor. Ugh. Such a rude vehicle. At least I'm hold down. Yes, this would have been an ambush, but our keen senses prevented it. Got those stationary woodland machine gunners there. Swap out our ammo in anticipation of fighting the the tank destroyer. Meanwhile, just open up with the machine guns on those regular guys. Wait, does this one not even have a bow machine gun? What a useless vehicle. I guess you just don't do anything today. Assistant driver, just relax. Just watch. And we're in cover, so you get to relax too. Just everybody. Loader, close your hatch. Actually, yeah. Close your hatch. Stay where you are. And down. I should consider... well, no, I can... I'll be able to turn the turret to face the other tank when the time comes. My hull is already protected. Our machine guns were a bad idea, but... Well, goodbye. Hostile tank destroyer. We'll miss you. Just stay on him. Points lost for a terribly disappointing fight. However, we got the bonus area. That's all well and good. enemy resistance in the village music weather weather has cleared the sun and air support will come out tomorrow yes you two gunner just being antsy don't worry about it it's fine all the all the big tough enemies are over there minding their own business we're not going to bother them I'm just gonna keep having a nice pleasant country drive just take in the sights. It's not every day you get to see France. Enjoy it. Heavy enemy resistance in the final zone. Okay. Bombard. Here we go fighting again. What do you got? Close machine gun. Close truck. Close light infantry. 
Medium armored car. That was greatly simplified by the application of artillery. Oh, there we go. The bow machine gun exists. I guess it just wasn't working for some reason during that fight. Perhaps it was jammed. Perhaps it was sensitive to weather. Perhaps it's just rude. I should read the event log more often. I just kind of... Oh, I was hulled down. That obstructed its view. Yeah. That would do it. Could have opened fire on a mound of dirt or a building or something. Okay, enemy machine gun team has entered a building. I know how to deal with building. Just keep firing until they run out of building. Okay, new map, and three hours left in the day, so we might get a fair distance along it. Especially with this nice highway leading most of the way to the exit. Sure, let's just go all in. to change. Still not that far off. <laughs> right, weapon steam. And a tank. Unidentified vehicle. Facing us stationary and haul down. We ourselves are not haul down. <coughs> this seems like a plan. Well, wait. Leave your hatch open so that you can. Drop this grenade. Why should we have more smoke mortar rounds than we do? Smoke grenade. So yeah, use the mortar. Just gonna back off, look for cover. Good teamwork. Thanks, everyone else. We did it. Hour and a half left. I will not make the exit. 
I'll get close. We have caught them off guard. We have the upper hand. in anticipation of everything going wrong. Gonna leave the doors open just in case hostile action forces me to abandon my perfectly good tank that I very much appreciate the Quartermaster assigning to my team. My very valuable piece of hardware that has been entrusted to me by the army. Oh, friendly. Okay, good. Never mind. Fine, we'll have to insurance fraud elsewhere. Someday we'll destroy this thing. Twenty-five minutes to go. A bonus objective has appeared right next to the exit, but I won't have time to reach either before the day is over. Whatever, into the fields. Good. A tank. A pair of tank. Two Panzer Fives. Surely this will be the end of us. Eighteen forward hull armor on these Panthers. Open up with all the machine guns and see if I can thin the herd. Decisions, decisions. Do I try to help put more pressure on those infantry or the yeah, smoke? I'll keep the smoke. As I prepare to swap out the shell for armor piercing. Turn to face the tanks because they are much more dangerous. Side on, but in woods. Hold down. Side on in the open. Hmm. 
Yep, I guess we just start shooting. Hope we can remove that panther with a good barrage and survive the other one with the front of our tank. Yep, settings are all good. Rough accuracy number. Okay, he's close but has given up his cover and wound up facing away from us somehow. I'll take it. Get him. Gun is jammed. But we nailed it. Alright, so wanna get into cover again. Or at all. Or to hold down if possible. Commander will direct the maneuver. Everyone else will attempt to fix the gun. Driver, come on! Uh, the term hold down refers to having... to getting into a position such that the body of the tank is is shielded by other objects, like terrain or buildings, while the turret is still exposed and able to point at and shoot things. In gameplay terms, being hull down means that any shot that would hit the body of your tank just automatically misses and fails to deal damage. All right, the gun is clear. Load her up. Keep some smoke on the ground while we wait. And they've run off. Alive! But why? At the end of another combat day. Level up. Level up, level up. Levels for everyone! So much learning comes out of survival. That's, that's Keen Senses maxed. I guess next up... They're going in for driver direction. Effective maneuvering has been very important to survivability. Uh, driver skills here, movement bonus if you are starting to move from stopped. Be better at finding cover if your hatch is open. Be better at getting out of mud if your hatch is open. And better chance of starting in cover. And even if it if it fails, you still get to start in motion, which gives you defensive benefit versus being caught still. Honor. Keep up on that quick trigger. Loader has quite fast hands. Learn to jump.
And our apprentice driver is quite good at tossing. Let's just make him better at using that battle machine gun. And with that, I'm actually starting to run up against time. Not a bad day to end on, though. But yeah, what are we driving? Shermans. Shermans. Oh, lots and lots of Shermans. So many Shermans. You want Sherman? We got Shermans. You can have any tank you want as long as it's a Sherman. A lot of Sherman variants with a lot of distinctive equipment loadouts and ways they behave, but it's lots and lots of Shermans. Shermans for days. At the moment, this team is stuck with the most bog standard and basic of Shermans, nearly. Whenever you lose your Sherman, you get a new Sherman rolled off the random Sherman table. But yeah, there, there we are, continuing to tool about in West France. Having a time of it. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. It's, it doesn't have endless replay value. It's fairly simple and has its, of course, coarse edges of being an ASCII art old time game, but it, it's functional. It, it achieves what it sets out to do. I find it interesting, and it, it's it's a free tank, Jim. You, you, you gotta bring a crew, but the tank is free. It's just... just... Five crewmen, no rugs. Armored commander. 